Hey guys, I'm Haley and I'm Shayna and we are the founders of Be The Change Charleston. We are a new nonprofit that is dedicated to empowering exceptional communities through advocacy, education, and support. So we're both former special educators so we can provide tips for y'all based on our former experience as providers and teachers but we don't have that experience of being parents of children with disabilities. So we sought out um, parents of children with disabilities in order to get some insight on their experiences so then we can share some tips with y'all. We are so excited and grateful to be here and we hope that we're able to provide further support and connection. So today we're going to be talking all about community connection tips. We want to share three practical ways that you can connect with your community. Our first topic focuses on building a community network. Many of the families that we work with express difficulty accessing local resources. So we wanted to develop some tools as a nonprofit to help access local resources in a quick and dependable manner. The first tool that we developed is our resource and agency directory. This directory is updated consistently in order to provide an easy way for you to search for service providers, other agencies, support groups, and nonprofits. We also developed our local consolidated event calendar for events in the Tri-County area. This is a one-stop place for you to be able to find inclusive events in your area. To check these out, you can visit our website at bethechangecharleston.org. Another tip for building a community network is to complete a search for nonprofits, organizations, and support groups on social media. Liking and following these pages and groups helps you stay current with services, events, and workshops. And if you don't already have a case manager, you can contact your local disability board to get further connected. Case managers will help you build a network of connections within your own community. You can also get your child involved in clubs and activities that are not disability specific. You can do this by completing a quick search for clubs in your local libraries, recreation centers, churches, and other religious centers. You can also ask your child's teacher for programs and opportunities within the school. These school-based programs are amazing at building inclusive communities. So to recap, our first topic is building a community network. You can do this by accessing our resource and agency directory and our local event calendar on our website. You can also research nonprofits and other groups and organizations on social media. Like and follow their pages to get more connected. You can also connect with a case manager from your local disability board. You can search for child-focused clubs and activities at your local rec centers, libraries, and religious centers. And you can also ask your child's teacher for school-based programs and extracurricular activities. So now we're going to move on to our second topic, which focuses on connecting with community members by sharing your stories. We surveyed parents of children with various disabilities about their experiences in the community. We took their experiences and created one main takeaway about building community connections. We asked parents, how do you handle questions or comments when you're with your child in the community setting? Our parents feel that it's very important to educate and inform others about their child's differences while they're in the community setting. One of our survey parents, Holly, reported that educating others helped reduce their fear of unknown situations. All parents felt that when they answered questions in the community, it helped them build positive connections with others. Many of our parents shared experiences where other parents have told their children that it is rude to ask questions. Many people are often uncomfortable with approaching a family that seems different from the norm. However, all of our parents shared that avoiding people with disabilities in the community creates further division rather than moving towards an inclusive and a connected world. Yeah, our parents, Nancy and Holly, want people to know that it's okay for other children to ask questions about disabilities and that we should teach others how to respect everyone's differences. Here's a recap of building community connections through sharing your story. Our tip is to use your experience to educate and inform others about your child's differences in order to build that disability visibility and create further positive connections in your community when it feels right to you. We do want to mention that, of course, you and your child both have the right to your own privacy. And we know that there are a lot of times whenever people are not so kind when they're asking questions. And, of course, you always have that right um, to hold things back and you don't have to ever explain yourself to other people. So now we're moving into our third and final topic. And this is about helping prepare your child to be their own advocate. So this is also helping your child tell their own stories whenever they get to the age where they can do that. Self-advocacy in the community is a huge step towards your child's independence. And self-advocacy includes self-awareness, knowing and communicating your needs, and knowing what accommodations or modifications are needed to access various environments. 
self-advocacy builds self-empowerment and disability pride. Here are some tips to build self-advocacy with your child. Tip one, hold regular discussions with your child about their strengths and areas of needs. You can also discuss your own areas of strengths and needs too. This will ensure that you're teaching your child that everyone has different needs and everyone uses their strengths to their advantage. Tip two is to model and praise your child for requesting help, communicating their needs, and problem solving. Modeling these self-advocacy skills demonstrates that everybody needs to communicate their needs, not just people with disabilities. Praising your child for using these skills will help build their confidence and increase the likelihood that they will use these skills independently in the future. Tip three, you can also teach your child about their legal rights as a citizen and a student. You can also teach them about their individual classroom accommodations and modifications. Ensuring your child attends and provides input in their IEP or 504 meetings at school. So tip four is to find a role model coach or peer who resembles or relates to your child. Having someone outside of your family who can relate and support your child or has similar experiences will help build that connection and empathy with others. This will help your child feel understood and respected for their own unique experience. Tip five, ask your child how they want to refer to their disability and then respect it. Some individuals prefer person-first language and others prefer something different. For example, some individuals with autism prefer to be called autistic rather than referred to as has autism. Their preference is not an imposition on others and everyone has a right to be referred to as they wish. Respecting your child's preference helps them build autonomy, pride, and self-respect. So to review, our first tip is to build a community network by seeking out those resources, agencies, and nonprofits in your area. Get connected. Tip two is to educate the community and build that disability visibility by sharing your stories with, when opportunities arise and if you wish to share. Tip three is to build that self-advocacy component in your child by modeling, praising, and seeking out resources and support. We hope this information was helpful for y'all. We would love to hear some feedback. We would also love for y'all to get connected by following us on Facebook, Instagram, or by visiting our website. Together, Together we can be the change. Hi, I'm Vincent. I'm a sixth grader at Karis Academy. I love this school because I actually have friends that are actually nice and teachers that are actually nice and also people that actually understand my jokes. And I really and I really love this school because I because at my old school I didn't have much friends. This school everyone in the school is my friends, even the grown ups. We have nice teachers and everything. That's why I love Kara so much.